Hi guys, this is Joe from Borderwinds Homestead. Uh, today I'll be talking a little bit about Angora rabbits and whether they're appropriate for your homestead and why I chose them as an animal to raise here. Um, there's five breeds of Angora rabbit that are available in the United States. They're, to me, I think they're absolutely all adorable. But what I'll do is I'll kind of start giving you a little bit of information from the smallest smallest breed all the way on up to the largest breed. The smallest breed of the uh, Angora is called an English Angora rabbit. They're about six, six and a half pounds in size. They're, they look like little, literally round balls of fluff, um, cotton balls, the st stereotypical dust bunny. Um, they have really dense wool, facial furnishings, what they call facial furnishings, which is they have bangs, you know, um, wool on their cheeks, and then really fluffy ears. They're, they do come in white as well as a variety of other colors. They're, I think every color that a rabbit can come in, the English Angora comes in that color. They're very, very compact. Um, they're, I have... That's the breed I started out with because I thought they're absolutely the most adorable thing on this on this earth and I needed to have some <laughs> and it actually is what got me into hand spinning and making yarns and so th these little guys started my <laughs> my spinning in you know in, in my obsession with the rabbit you know angora rabbits um they are very puppy dog like in their personality because it it's you have for an animal see the angora rabbits they <laughs> they live in a fine line because they are technically a production animal their product that they produce is that wool that is fine it is like one of the warmest things on this planet and so they need to be able to be handled safely uh, for both the rabbit and the human being harvesting the wool because a lot of the people that harvest them they harvest you know with clippers or scissors so the rabbit has to have patience so that's why you know I talk of that puppy dog wet rag kind of personality to where they they'll let you do almost anything to them there are certain things they won't let you let you do but they're very <laughs> they're very people oriented um the english angoras are the highest maintenance because i find when mine are in coat you know with when their wool is longer than an inch long i need to be grooming them two three times a week to keep their coat healthy to mat free and to be able to produce the best product i can produce for my customers who buy my wool um size wise they're you know a 24 by 24 site inch cage would would do an english angora very nicely um so you can actually have them in apartments and you know kind of treat them like a house rabbit and it you know it have the best of many worlds uh, you know a really really great pet um, high maintenance pet, I mean really high maintenance pet, but be able to produce a product to kind of help ease those folks of you who are looking for a homestead product to produce but can't have chickens, goats, you know, all that. They, you, you, don't have, you don't have the room yet to have other lives, you know, homestead type animals yet um so rabbits are kind of an easy way in, you know to eat <laughs> lack of better terminology i'm sorry an easy way to <laughs> ease into homesteading um it it you can eat them but there's other breeds more appropriate for that. In English Angora, I would not consider a dual purpose rabbit. They are just specifically a wool rabbit. Um, the next sized breed up is called a Satin Angora. It is one of the more rare of 
all the five breeds. They're they're more of a dual purpose rabbit. They can get the ideal weight for them is about eight pounds, but they're in the eight nine pound range depending on you know male or female. They have a very very because of the characteristics of their coat. It it has it looks like satin ribbon. Um, it's a very fine, silky, shiny wool, and you you can actually ask a little bit more money per ounce when you sell it to customers, um, just because of the characteristics. It, it, it is the softest of all the Angora wool, and it's because it's very, very fine. Um, you don't get as much. So, oh, the, for angora rabbits, their harvest their wool is harvested every three months, every ninety days. Um, the English angora, you can expect two to three ounces of it for every three months. In, um, a satin angora, three ounces on a really really dense rabbit is a lot. So you're um, in that two you know two ounce range, just because of the fineness of that wool. Um, they, they, their faces are a lot, are a lot cleaner. They, they have fluffier cheeks and some of them do have a little bit of fluff on their ears. Um, but I'm trying to think they do come, they come in all colors. Uh, you'll kind of see them more of that brassy copper color, um, just because of the genetics that's out there right now, but white, all colors of the rainbow. They do have... A commercial body type which means you know a meat rabbit body type so you can if you choose to you know any extras or you know you put them in the freezer for your consumption they take a little longer than like a traditional meat rabbit breed to grow to you know that four or five pound range where you know it's the ideal size but it can be done. So if you're looking for a dual purpose wool and meat, a satin angora is suitable for that. Um, they do require we weekly groomings. I had one satin angora doe for a little while. I did need to get into her wool, you know, twice a week because she was very, very dense. Um, but I, I find that was a little bit she was one of the densest satin angoras I've seen, which, you know, was great for me, but, um, just a little bit atypical. The next largest, uh, angora rabbit is the French angora. I have a few of these guys. These guys are truly dual purpose. Um, they're about eight, eight and a half pounds up to 10 pounds. Um, they do have cleaner faces and ears. I do have a couple that have little tufts on the tops of their ears. They come in white, all colors. Um, most of mine here are pearls, which are white with the darker points and a little bit of color frosting at the very tips of their wool. Again, commercial body type. Um, my extra boys do end up in my freezer. Uh, they taste very good. Um, the wool, I get on my guys because I do it a little bit differently. I, because I'm in the south, I shave their bellies and their legs. So I only keep the, pr the prime prime on the rabbits. So I usually get about three ounces. So you can get about three, four ounces every three months off of these guys. They do have a dense, silky wool. It uh, does have more guard hairs than, say, an English or a satin angora. Um, they're still present in those breeds, but they're they're more uniform fiber, you know, fiber diameter. Um, the French angora, it's a lot m more prominent. Um, they do need to be groomed. A couple of mine I can get away with two weeks, but weekly to keep a healthy and happy coat and, you know, keep their skin in prime condition. Um, I love these guys. 
I do. Um, because I've had the English Angoras to where, you know, I go from a super high maintenance rabbit to these guys are a very appropriate rabbit Angora breed for those who are a little bit busier or who are running a homestead um, that have to have their attention spread over several different things and versus yes you know I only have rabbits to raise um, I would recommend a French Angora for somebody starting out they are a little bit larger rabbit uh, like I said they can get up to 10 pounds so probably a 30 inch by 30 inch cage would be the minimum size that you'd want per rabbit um, that way they can stretch out and you know move around and plus their wool because <laughs> you you get you know three sometimes four inch long wool on these guys um their litter sizes are a little bit bigger well actually i should say a lot bigger than the english angora rabbits in my experience like i would get five on average about five babies from an english angora um, the French Angora, uh, the one doe, she, she gave me nine. So, you know, when you look at it from, you know, from the financial aspect, if you're looking at it strictly as a business, the, actually the way out, because the English Angoras, you can ask a little bit more money for them, but the French Angora, to me, they're more... What's the term I'm looking for? The feed, feed, for what you get for, you know, return wise, the feed conversion is more efficient than say English Angoras because the French were bred as a dual purpose rabbit. Now the giant Angora, <laughs> A lot of, um, it's huge. It's, they, they, it's the only rabbit breed that there is no maximum or, ang you know, Angora breed that there is no maximum weight. Um, when you look at the breed standards, but there is a minimum weight. So the minimum is, you know, for the males, it's nine and a half pounds, females, 10 pounds for, um, they can be a dual purpose, but I find they're more, the breeders are focusing more on the wool production versus, you know, a secondary purpose for them. So the meat to bone ratio on them is not as ideal. So you have a really bony, bony carcass, but the wool, they're, tr you know, trying to get it to be very similar to the next breed that I'm gonna uh, talk about but for the giant Angora they have a medium fine soft wavy wool um, some of them I've seen have really nice facial furnishings the fluff on the face and the ears but it's not a focus of the breed so the giant Angoras and the English Angoras will they look the more most similar but not quite. The English Angora is like the mini version and the giant obviously is a larger version. Um, right now, you, you only find a lot of them in white unless they're hybrids. Um, they're through the rabbit club that they, the Angora, you know, National Angoras, um, they're trying to get black as a recognized color in the breed currently so that's a few years out so you you'll be able to find them in white and black currently but mostly white um because it's 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 a, a wool pro producing animal uh you get about four or five ounces every three months on them some probably more but you know this is an overall average um i don't have very much experience with giant angoras just because of the rarity of them um, I'm trying to think if there's, but they're, they're big. So you'd need like a 36 inch by 36 inch cage for those guys. 
Now, the German Angora is a breed that they chose not to become recognized with the American Rabbit Breeders Association, like the other four breeds, because they wanted to maintain their own standards and to have a registered German Angora, they need to you know produce a minimum amount of wool every three months. It, so they are mainly a wool producer, but they also have a very you know bread loaf, very compact, very meaty body that facilitates um, being able to harvest the wool off of them efficiently. And um, but so they are like a true production angora. They're not cheap. They're one of the most expensive angoras out there, but the return on your investment, you, you will get a, very quickly get a return on your investment with, if you purchase one of them. They're about an 11, 12 pound rabbit, um, very, very dense wool, but the guard hair to the wool, and you know, there's three fiber, fiber, three hair types on them that it's you only need to groom them out like once a week um, because they're designed to be pretty very low maintenance um, production because you can't spend a lot of time grooming it's that labor versus return you know um, they do do have some furnishings on their face so they do have a fluffy face they come in um, white. I've seen some of the hybrids, you know, that are like somebody will say, um, my rabbit's like 98% German. It's because there's, you know, they've introduced back in the, you know, back in their um, pedigree a, a different breed to like say a color. Um, so you can get col whites and you get colored Angoras or German Angoras. Um, now, to have a registered German Angora, I do have that written down on my cheat sheet here, um, you do have to have verified. So you have to present your rabbit for inspection in full 90 days worth of uh, wool growth, and it has to be documented. And they need to produce a minimum of 320 grams, and I, that's... I believe that came up to 11 ounces per harvest. So you're looking at two and a half, two and three quarters pounds of Angora wool per year. So when you, you know, it's 40, 44 ounces times, say, $8 an ounce, it, it, it does pay for their feed and their care um, for the year. Plus some. Yeah, um, but they are truly of wool producing machines. Um, feed, they're very efficient with it. So um, I would love to get my hands on some of these, you know, a couple of these guys just to have and take care of just because I think they're, they're a gorgeous rabbit and because I want to be able to offer more of my Angora products out there. But and I'm not able to right now because my my space versus the breeds I have, I don't have wool machines. I have um, well, no, I the one rabbit he's not quite a wool machine. Um, my my th th there's an average production, and my rabbits are average. I would like to be able to step up my game, but that's in the future. Um, because I don't, I don't think Angora, uh, fiber gets, gets enough credit because people, it's light. You don't need very much to stay warm so you can make really fine, you know, really thin fabrics out of it in main, be warm. Um, I mean, a lot of the Arctic expeditions, they do use Angora fiber 
in the clothing that they have because it's far superior to a lot of the syn synthetic stuff that they have out there right now. Um, so it, it's, I think with a lot of the bulk or the big box stores, I blame a lot of things on big box stores, whether it's true or not, but it, it just seems that the, the big box, you know, that, that mentality where you can buy cheap stuff, convenient, and the quality of the product has been sacrificed for price. Um, excuse me. So it's that, you know, that fast food mentality. It's where, you know, you need to be cheap and quick. Cheap and quick, to, and that's plain and simple. That people have lost, whether it's due to not knowing about natural fibers or just not having natural fibers available because you know, the big box stores are going overseas and getting cheap synthetic stuff available for clothing wise and other other products that the um, like Angora rabbits that that wool and the um, sheep's wool and alpaca llama yeah, ox musk musk ox buffalo those fibers people don't realize how nice they are um, they're more expensive and I think that's where people are hemming and hawing it's like why why would I buy that because it's because there's a in the you know 20 some odd years that I've been conscious of the world um, I'm older than that but just of conscious of the world <laughs> um, a lot of a lot of things aren't being taught and I think that's where the homesteading comes in to where you know getting back to um, basics in excuse me um, there it, it, there's an, a lack well I'm trying to figure out how to word it um, there's a knowledge gap and there's a lot of us that are trying to help you know at least sh shorten that gap um, Angora rabbits the more people out there in homesteading that have them and are able to produce wool for spinners and the more spinners that are spinning it producing you know products hats scarves gloves sweaters ponchos um, vests um, jackets cardigans all those stuff the more that we have doing that, the more the public will understand and appreciate those fibers. So that's kind of why I do it, um, other than the you know cuteness factor of it all. But it's to educate the public what is available, what is available locally, what is available here in the U.S., what um, you know your neighbor down the road makes that is what I would consider to be far superior than a you know, plastic sweater, you know, totally, you know, polyester sweater that they can buy at Walmart for tw almost, you know, 25 bucks. It, it, to me, that 25 bucks for a sweater is kind of um, a bit for a plastic sweater from Walmart. Um, I would rather pay, you know, 75, $85 for a nice natural fiber sweater or shawl from somebody down the street for me that they raise the animals, they spun spun the spun the yarn, and they then they knit it or crocheted. I it, that's to me I appreciate that more. Um, it, it there's a lot of factors into it, but I think a lot of it is lack of knowledge of what these fibers are like and how they're far superior. They are far superior to the synthetic stuff that's out there right now. Um, except polar fleece. Polar fleece, I don't know. I just love polar fleece. But that's, that's another topic for another day. <laughs> but um, 
I hope that I've been able to give you enough information to where you can decide whether an angora rabbit is something that you would want to consider for your homestead and what breed. Um, I don't I I don't know how to put pictures up on the my webcam or yeah webcam videos because I'd love to be able to you know like right in this little section be able to put it up little pictures of the critter that I'm discussing um, eventually I'll learn or get a software that I can do that with but um, any questions on angora rabbits any and all questions I'm your go-to person on asking about that I've got folks who do you know specifically ask me whenever they have a rabbit question um, I've been doing this for well over 10 years specifically with the angoras so I have pretty much experienced everything that you can experience with an angora rabbit um, so I would hope you would want to be able to use me as a sounding board or a resource. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. And I appreciate, you know, learning. Um, who all out there is interested in them and hope I was helpful. But um, like always, we ask you to like, subscribe, check out the Facebook pages, uh, Border Winds Homestead and Spencer Joe's Fiber Arts. Um, We've got the blog on my website and don't forget about the Kickstarter. I've only got like five days left on that. Um, so I'm hoping it, within the five days we can meet our goal. But until next time, I will see you guys later. And any questions, comments, don't hesitate. I appreciate them all. Thanks.